Good afternoon, everybody. Today is Friday, August 22nd, 2025. And my name is Brian Brettschneider. I'm a seasonal forecaster and senior climate scientist with the National Weather Service Alaska region. And we're gonna be going over the latest extended outlook information. We have some new products that were just released yesterday and in the last week. And so let's just get right to it. But first we're gonna do kind of a recap of a few things. And this is kind of a fun thing. Um, and this is looking at how much daylight we have uh, changed since the summer solstice, right? So, um, so this map shows the number of hours and minutes. And so for Anchorage, you can see uh, a little over four hours of daylight has been, uh, has been lost since the summer solstice. And for Fairbanks, it's up over six hours. And then of course, uh, as we hit right at the uh, Arctic Circle, even more than that. And this is just kind of a, a map comparison showing how much daylight there was on the summer solstice. Remember this year was June 20th, normally it's June 21st. And then here on the right, um, today's date. So those uh, areas of darker red and yellow are shrinking. Now what about between now and the summer solstice? How much time, uh, how much more daylight is there that's still left to, to change? And in Anchorage, it's over nine hours. So there's still nine hours more of daylight uh, that's gonna be lost. And for Fairbanks, it's just about 12 hours. And of course, for Diogvik on the North Slope, it's all the rest of the daylight that's gonna go away even before the, uh, the winter solstice. And again, a comparison map showing uh, the difference between today's date on the left and the winter solstice on the right. So a lot of daylight change still remaining. Okay, so how have we done so far in uh, the month of August, so looking at the first three weeks of August. And actually, it's not that far from normal. So there's a few little spots of blue um, in, say, the Copper River Basin and the middle Kuskokwim Delta or Valley, uh, and then a kind of a ring of above normal temperatures all around the state, all, all the, uh, the coastal areas um, and mu much of the Canadian border. But for the most part, everyone is within a degree of normal so far, but you'll see in these outlooks coming up that may change between now and the end of the month. Precipitation-wise, it's been a pretty dry month. Uh, there was a lot of rain in Juneau uh, in the days around the glacial outburst flood from the uh, Suicide Basin, and a few uh, areas of heavy rain in the, um, the eastern interior, say around uh, Gulkana and Toke and Northway, east of Fairbanks, and then up around Kotzebue. And a lot of below normal colors, pretty much everywhere else. And so August is the wettest month of the year for most of the mainland, uh, but we have a little bit of catching up to do. All right, and then finally for sea ice, uh, we're actually doing pretty good in sea ice for this time of the year. We're at about 120% of normal at Chukchi Sea and nearly 130% of normal in the Beaufort Sea. And a lot of this ice in the Beaufort Sea is multi-year ice. And so uh, we don't really expect that to, to diminish a whole lot between now and when the, when the historic uh, seasonal minimum is, which is typically the second week of September. It changes, that's plus or minus a week. So, uh, so a rare, uh, spot of good news for sea ice. Most of the rest of the Arctic Basin is way behind, but our little corner of uh, the Arctic is, is doing okay. All right, so let's look at our first outlook map. And this is what we call the week two outlook. So this is the eight to 14 day outlook. This covers the August 29th through September 4th period. I've got the little pie charts on here, but the story is warm. Every place uh, except for north of the Brooks Range is painted in some shade of orange. And in south central and southeast Alaska, um, what we have is over a 50% probability of being in the upper third of the temperature distribution. So that's basically being much above normal. And that is strongly favored. There's always a little chance of being significantly below normal, but it's a pretty small chance uh, compared to uh, to the warm signal. For precipitation, not a lot of a signal here. There is 
a kind of a little bit of a wet signal for the southern two thirds of the mainland. Uh, but you know, it's 36% chance of being wetter than normal and a 31% chance of drier than normal. It's close enough to say anything could happen. So not a lot to take home from this. Okay, monthly outlooks. This is brand new, this is hot off the press. Just came out yesterday. Monthly outlooks for temperature and precipitation. So let's look at the temperatures first. And just like with the eight to 14 day outlook, a lot of warm colors covering most of the state. Now there's an important thing to keep in mind here that there's a strong trend in the last 15, 20, 30 years of warming, particularly along the West Coast. Our numeric, what we call our numerical guidance, the, the forecast models don't really show a lot of difference from normal for this period, but there's a strong trend and our teleconnection, what we call our teleconnection indices, and so PDO, Arctic Oscillation, some other things that we can talk about uh, another day perhaps. Um, those are strongly indicating warmer than normal temperatures. So even though this looks like it's a, uh, a pretty strong signal for warmer than normal conditions in the month of September, I would generally call it a low confidence forecast. And speaking of low confidence forecasts, uh, precipitation, really not much of a signal at all. Um, except for here in Southeast, really all of Southeast, all the way up to um, Cordova looks, in, is in that, that, just that barely first category of, of above normal precipitation. But the monthly time scale, precipitation is a low confidence forecast at best. And this is really not much of a signal at all. So there's really nothing to take home from this. Now for the seasonal outlook, kind of the same picture. There was a very modest hint of above normal temperatures in most places, but this is strongly influenced. This is a strong reflection of climatology and trends. With the reduction in sea ice in the, um, in the fall months, in the Chukchi Sea in particular, in the last two decades, um, it just is a, a pipeline for lots of warm air to uh, to spill over into the mainland. So this is very much a, uh, a trend and climatology forecast. And that's okay for climate. You know, your first uh, guess at, you know, if you don't know anything else about, you know, is next month or next season or next year gonna be warmer than normal or, or cooler than normal, your first assumption should always be it's gonna be warmer than normal because temperatures are rising but not any place more than Western and Northern Alaska and not at any time more during the year than in the fall months. So this is very much a climate forecast. And then precipitation wise, again, not much of a signal at all. Uh, just a little bit of a slight wet tilt in Western Alaska, but really nothing uh, noteworthy to kind of hang your hat on and say, this is, this, this is something I feel pretty confident about. So what are some of the things that are driving our, uh, our seasonal outlook? And a big part of it is what we call our ENSO outlook. ENSO stands for El Nino Southern Oscillation. And a week ago, Wednesday, so on August 14th, or, or maybe it was Thursday, the Climate Prediction Center issued a La Nina watch. And that means La Nina conditions are favored to develop in the coming months. Um, it's not a prediction that it will happen, but the watch means it could happen and it's time to start thinking about what that means. And this is their, uh, their, their forecast plot. Now for El Nino, La Nina, we always think of this in three months a time period. So ASO stands for August, September, October. SON stands for September, October, November. And OND is October, November, December. And that's when we see the highest probability, almost 60% of having La Nina conditions, okay? Now, technically, to meet the criteria, you have to have five consecutive three-month overlapping periods uh, to, with the sea surface temperature below half degree Celsius uh, from the, uh, the, the recent 30-year average normal. Um, and it doesn't look like we're gonna have five, 
But that's why they issue a watch. A watch means it could happen. So if things are a little cooler than we think, and actually it's kind of trending that way. So don't be surprised if we end up transitioning from a La Nina watch to a La Nina advisory here in the next couple of months. Now, when we talk about El Nino La Nina, we're looking at this box right here. And this is a, a multi-model forecast um, that incorporates uh, all these uh, model uh, groups uh, for sea surface temperatures in the October, November, December period. And it actually doesn't show much of a signal here. It's showing kind of in that nondescript kind of near normal category with a little bit of blue here at the bottom. Um, and that's our, that's our El Nino, La Nina uh, box that we, we do these evaluations on. So a lot of mixed signals could go either way. Um, we've had La Nina for the previous five winters and we're kind of in a, in a, in a, uh, a cycle now where La Nina is favored above all other conditions. Now, what does that mean for Alaska? Well, first of all, La Nina, El Nino represents maybe 30% of the variability in our, in our weather from, uh, for, the, for the entire climate system, weather climate system. And so we can't just say, well, if it's La Nina, it's gonna do this. If it's El Nino, it's gonna do this. These are things that, that tip the thumb, the thumbs on the scale. It makes things more likely or less likely, okay? And when we have a weak La Nina, so this means weak La Nina, it's favored to be cooler in the western half of the state, I'm sorry, the eastern half of the state, and it's favored to be a little bit warmer in the western half of the state. So these are temperature departures for the 17 years where we had weak La Nina conditions. So again, this represents about 30, maybe a little bit more percent of the variability. So a lot of other things can go on, but all other things being equal, the thumb would be on the scale for a little bit cooler in Southeast and a little bit warmer in the West. What about precipitation? Not a lot of strong signals, okay? A little bit of a hint toward wetter conditions in the interior and a couple of spots of drier, drier here in South Central, a little bit drier in Southern Southeast, you know, Seward Peninsula, Central Brooks Range, but pretty weak signals for precipitation. It's not like a lot of places in the lower 48 that are strongly correlated. Uh, just kind of weak precipitation correlations. And then of course, precipitation in, this is for October through December, is generally uh, snowfall. And the, the signal for snow is pretty much the same as for precipitation since in October through December, most precipitation uh, especially north of, of Anchorage, it falls in the form of snow. So a little bit of a tilt toward snowier than normal conditions in the central part of the mainland and uh, a few dots of yellow of below normal snow, not really much signal around Anchorage. Uh, October through December doesn't really have a whole lot of snow yet for southeast. Normally their, their snowy season is kind of maybe December through February. Um, but you can see generally, because of the higher precipitation just south of southeast, uh, a pretty strong signal for snowier in La, weak La Nina winters. So, um, so those are just some things to keep in the back of your mind for how uh, a La Nina winter may evolve. And actually this is for a La Nina fall. It's kind of unusual the La Nina that they, they think might happen would peak in the fall and not the winter. Uh, typically La Nina's peak in the early to even late winter. So we'll see how these things evolve. All right, well, thanks for joining today for the uh, extended outlook. And we, we will keep doing this um, as information uh, data is released. And we will be doing a, uh, a summer recap here in the next few weeks when data come in approximately uh, a week into September. So thank you and have a great day.